Hi Justus, this is a beautiful image of Neptune with your EV scope and you've detected Neptune's methane atmosphere. That's what these deep, deep absorption features are in the graph. So I'll come back to interpret the spectrum in a moment, but first I want to show you how we got here. Oh, and before we dive in, I want to remind you that when you watch any screen recording like this one, for the best experience, make sure you're watching it in the highest resolution that's available. That's typically 1080p HD. And it really helps if you maximize the playback window to fill your screen. Okay, so I wanted to show you the steps to extract this spectrum using RSpec. First, I'll load the PNG file from the Unistellar app using RSpec's open button. Here's Neptune. And here's its beautiful color spectrum created by the star analyzer filter on your telescope. We can even see the gaps in the spectrum right in the original image right here. And as I said at the start, these are the gaps caused by Neptune's atmosphere. So now let's do some science. First, I'll drag our spec sampling lines around the spectrum to tell it the region that we want to study. Okay, great. Now over here, we can see the graph that we saw earlier. This is a graph of the brightness of the region just between the orange lines. This peak here is from Neptune, and this region over here, as we saw earlier with the deep absorption features, is from the spectrum here with the gaps in your image. Of course, a graph is just a series of points. In fact, let's make them visible for a moment. I'll click on Appearance, and then on the Lines tab, and I'll put a check mark by Points Visible. <laughs> wow, that is a lot of points. Let's zoom in with my mouse roller wheel. So how did our spec come up with these points from the image? Well, it started over here in column one of the image, and it added up the brightness of each point between the orange lines, just in column one. And then it takes that total brightness and plots it as the y value over here for point number one on the x-axis. So this y-axis value of, let's say, a few hundred is the total brightness for column one in the image and here on the graph. Then the software just does the same thing all the way across the image on the second column, on the third column, plotting each one over here on the graph. So I'm going to double click to zoom out and let's turn off all those points. By the way, this graph is sometimes called a profile. Okay, so notice that currently the graph's x-axis is the image column, right? Remember, the software worked its way across the image column by column, one pixel at a time, to create the graph. The x-axis here goes up to, let's see, about 2500, because that's the width of the PNG image that you exported from the Unistellar app. Now, for us to do the fun science, we need to convert this x-axis from columns to a standard wavelength measure, in this case, angstroms. It actually only takes about five seconds to do, but I have to stop talking to do that. So I want to slow down a little bit to explain the steps so that you can do them for yourself. First, I'll click on this Calibrate button, and then in this Calibration window, I'll select the first box. The software here wants to know an x-axis pixel value for any point on the graph. Okay, so let's start out with this peak, which we saw as the intensity plot of Neptune itself. I need to figure out the x-axis value for the very top of this peak. Well, one way to do that would just be to move my mouse back and forth along the x-axis and, well, then, then guess. It's pretty crude. I mean, is it 460, is it 470, or whatever. But here's an easier and more exact way. I can hover my mouse over the peak and see here, the peak's x-axis value shows up in the balloon. Let's see, it's 467. So I could just type that 467 in over here, or I can just click on the graph line itself and the software will transfer that number into the calibration field. Let's do that. There, I clicked and the number is transferred to the window on the left. I didn't have to type anything yet. Okay, so just a quick disclaimer for the purists watching this. This peak I clicked on here may not be the exact center of this data, and that's okay for our purposes here. We'll see that in just a moment. But don't worry, the software has a lot of other more advanced tools if we need to determine the exact center of the peak. So next, we need to enter the wavelength of that peak. Well, the, the peak is Neptune itself, and that's the light that went straight through your star analyzer grading without getting deflected at all. So since it wasn't deflected, we can say its wavelength is, well, sort of zero, as funny as that sounds. So I'll just put a zero in this field here. So we've just put in two numbers, and those first two points were easy because we used the peak and we used a zero. 
So now these two fields here below are where we could put in a second graph point and its wavelength. But here's the problem. Most of us, including me, aren't PhD astrophysicists. We don't know all the details of all this stuff. At this point, we might not know anything about the spectrum, its absorption features, what causes them, what wavelength they're at. That's what we're trying to learn. How are we supposed to identify the wavelength of a specific feature in the graph as my second pair of points? I can't. In fact, I don't have to know anything more about this graph to calibrate it. Over here, when I click this box, a new window appears. And here's where the magic happens. How? We'll take advantage of a really simple fact. On a given telescope setup, the length of the total spectrum and its distance from the star never changes. Once we know how fast the spectrum is spreading out on your particular setup, we can use that to calibrate. So the technical term for how fast a spectrum spreads out is called dispersion. We need to know the dispersion of your setup. So of course the next step is how do we know what the dispersion is? Well, remember that the first thing we recommended you do with your star analyzer and telescope is to capture the spectrum of an A-type star, like Vega or Sirius. These stars are easy to calibrate, and there's another video to show you how to do that. But here's the thing. After calibrating one of those A-type stars on your telescope, Justice, we know the dispersion. Here's the RSpec screen for an A-type star captured on your setup. The dispersion value we're looking for is this one. It's 4.38 angstroms per pixel. That's our magic number. Watch this. I'll type in 4.38, and when I click down here, watch how the image column in pixels, the x-axis values over here, turn to angstroms. So that's all there is to it. We've just calibrated your Neptune spectrum. So let's step back just for a moment. As the sun's light reaches Neptune and then is reflected back towards us, it of course goes through Neptune's atmosphere. And this is the exciting part. The atmosphere absorbs just certain colors or wavelengths from the light. Which wavelengths the atmosphere absorbs depends on what the atmosphere is made of. So these absorption features here, they occur at specific wavelengths on the x-axis, right? How can we use those wavelengths to figure out what gases the light went through? Okay, so built into RSpec is what's called a reference library. I'll click on this toolbar button to open it. You can see it has a list of all sorts of things. Now, we could take the time to walk through all of these items one at a time, but let's just jump to methane. I'll put a check mark here next to methane. In the graphing area, you can see RSpec has overlaid a template of blue lines that show where methane absorbs light. And look at that, they match. Our spectrum in red has deep absorption features exactly where we'd expect them if the reflected sunlight coming from Neptune had gone through methane. So congratulations once again, Justice, for detecting the methane in Neptune's atmosphere. And you've seen here how we can use RSpec to extract that information from the image that your EV scope captured.